Oh, hello there. Welcome to the first Q&A session of the channel. You guys are 5,000. This is incredible. And I thought this was the right time to answer all the questions you had from me. So find a comfortable place to sit, make yourself a good tea and let's talk. First of all, I would like to apologize for um, mispronouncing your nicknames and names. I'm sure this is gonna happen. I don't do it on purpose. It's just that sometimes it's hard. So, Archie, Archie Mosworth, Archie Mosworth, fourth, ask, um, what time is it? So it's 9.37 p.m. Blabby 200, ask are you having a good day today well i am thank you for asking Shrapmaster asks what made you want to start the channel i actually wanted to create a youtube channel for a very very long time i think there is a big communication gap between people who work in science scientists and, and non-scientists and i always felt it was very important to uh, to fill that gap I, I tried to do science communication on Twitter, Instagram, and, and Facebook, but unfortunately, I always felt a lot constrained by the limitations of the platform. So YouTube was the next logical step in my science communication adventure. Jog Bear Cool or Joji Bear Cool and Ian Galvez Zamora asked me what inspired you to start a YouTube channel and do you have someone who is a big inspiration to you uh, either in life or as a YouTuber? So definitely the French science education show called C'est pas sorcier which means it's not rocket science which was a big deal for me during my childhood. I just loved that show. If you know the show and if you know what my content is I guess you can you can easily find some similarities with what those guys were doing at the time. And also, of course, all the big science uh, YouTube channels like uh, Kurzgesagt or Vsauce, Veritasium, uh, Physics Girl. But the thing is that I don't really spend a lot of time on YouTube. And when I do, I mostly watch non-science related content. I'm actually really into um, retro console modding lately. It's been quite an obsession in the last month. Uh, for example, here I modified this old Game Boy DMG, the first generation, and created this YouTube channel, which is called The Retro Future, that I really, really like. And Elliot, the, the, the channel's owner, is his passion and energy is very inspiring to me. I love this, I love this. Peyuko asks, how do you feel about having a young channel and already having 5,000 followers? What did you think your YouTube experience would be like when you started? Also PewDiePie, not the real PewDiePie, asks, do you imagine your channel getting millions of viewers or is that too far? If I have to be honest, I really have a hard time believing there are like 5,000 people following me and listening to what I have to say. This is, this is an incredible amount of people and I don't have a lot of words to explain how much that represents to me. Now, I was not expecting my channel to grow so fast and surely I was not expecting to have such a beautiful and nice community. I read all your comments and when I can, I reply to all your comments and I've only seen nice and supportive messages and that is so cool and amazing and you guys give me a lot of strength in this adventure. So I'm really, really grateful. I love you all. And if I can be honest on this question about millions of subscribers, of course, I would be happy to have a lot of subscribers. Now, I'm a bit scared of having a very, very huge community of people following me, mostly because I really like these interactions that I have with you in the comment section, in private messages, and I'm kind of scared that 
reaching a certain amount of subscribers, I will lose some of this relationship that I have with my community. At a certain point, I will not be able to uh, read all your comments, to reply to your comments. And I think that is a little bit sad. So yeah, I just hope the channel will keep growing and that the community will still be as cool as you are right now. Noah's Noah's deleted videos asked thoughts about the kings of YouTube, PewDiePie, Dr. Nemo, etc. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I'm a king of YouTube at all. And the answer to your question is very easy. I've never watched a video by PewDiePie and it's not because I, I want to be a the alternative guy who doesn't do whatever is trendy is that I, I think I've heard about him like very late in his career and I was never interested in the type of content he produces so I, I'm pretty sure I've never seen any of his videos so the Geke Lucas and Elijah Yan sorry for the names asked what are my future plans for the channel I will keep making videos for the series I already created, Krakenology, Curiosity, Microcosmic. I really would like to make some songs for vibrations with this format where I will sing about science. So far I didn't have the opportunity to do it just because of the pandemic. I didn't have the opportunity to, to meet with other members of my band and I really would like to do something very cool. Didn't happen but this is something I want to continue to do and on the long run I will clearly make new series. So going that direction, heavy putty Spencer guy asked what other series do you have in mind? Maybe dinosaurs? Well, I, I would love to talk about dinosaurs. I'm not an expert at all. Um, maybe if I had to talk about dinosaurs, I, I would talk about avian dinosaurs, like birds, but I'm not sure. I hope uh, one day I will be able to travel, to do interviews, and maybe even to, to observe and film animals in nature, maybe underwater, that would be so cool. But we'll see how things evolve with the channel. Donut King asked, do you plan to ever stream? I never thought about it, should I? Let me know in the comment and if the answer is yes, what type of content would you like me to, to, to do uh, live? Chris Grease asked, is this your future job? <sighs> I would love this to be my job, truly. I, I really would like it. It is not right now. For me, it's more like a hobby, something that I do when I have some time after work. I am not eligible for monetization yet. And even though I have some patrons, I am very, very far from making this a sustainable job. I recently became an affiliate for a Curiosity Stream and ExpressVPN. So you might see occasionally some advertisements for those two services that I personally like. But for now, it's very far away from being a job. There is a lot of things that need to happen before that. So I have a lot of hope if it happens that it can become a sustainable job. I would totally do it. Totally. Nico asked, will you start or wish doing collabs with other science channels. Yes, I would love to. You probably know Curious Tangents and it would be amazing to do a collaboration with Travis. I would also love to cook or paint with a Christine Liu Art or do a collaboration with Drop of Curiosity. He's a French neuroscience communicator and he's also a friend of mine and it would be cool to do. This beta, this beta, your animations are really good. Are you making them on your own? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm using an iPad Pro. I use two apps, Sketchbook for drawing and Rough Animator for animation. The Wiz Owls, the Wiz O's, the Wiz Owls, Wiz Owls. <laughs> What's your favorite color? My favorite color has been orange for a very, very long time. And then a few years ago, I, I completely fell in love for red. I don't know why, but I feel this color is very relaxing to me and I just, I just love it. What is your favorite fruit? Mango. Favorite type of bread? I don't know if it has a specific name in English or in any language, but in Italy, they have this bread where they bake the bread with olives and cheese and it's amazing. I love it. Pane con olive e formaggio. Heather Villiestra. No, Heather 
Viestra. Would you ever join in a friendly discussion with a creationist? That is a very good question. Yes, I would. For me, discussions are very important. It's a moment where there's an exchange of information between two people. And even if you are talking with someone with very strong beliefs and you will not be able to change their mind, well, you might still get some information on how those people think the way they think. I think there's always something to gain from friendly conversations. Maria Carida asked, do you think that if a video is bad, the best you have to do is dislike it or do nothing? That is a very, very interesting question. I think it really depends on what you mean by bad. If by bad you mean a video that promotes violence, racism, or anything that is completely inappropriate, I don't think you should dislike it or do nothing. I think you should report it. Now, if by bad you mean that the video or audio quality is bad or, I don't know, the person is trying to be funny but it's not or trying to teach something and the explanations are very messy, I believe that disliking the video or doing nothing is not very constructive. Probably you should ask yourself a question. Did that person spend some time and energy creating that content? And if the answer is yes, maybe you should just drop a comment and say why you don't like it. What do you think is bad about video? And most importantly, giving some suggestion. What would you like to see? How that person could improve his or her videos? And I personally love when you do that in the videos and giving me feedback. I like it when, when you tell me what you think is wrong, what you think you don't like. Justinas Slepavisius asks, Star Trek or Star Wars? I am a big Star Wars fan, but on the other hand, I've never seen Star Trek. Sorry, sorry. From what I heard, I'm sure I would love Star Trek. I just never had a time to watch it. Can you really compare the two franchises though? Amazing Kratos 716 and Sami Shukair and also Snabu Junkun, Junkun all asked me something about my studies and my job. What did you study in university if you went? Are you a recent graduate? If so, do you also have another job? And are you a real doctor? So I have a bachelor's degree in organismal biology and ecology. And I also have a master's degree in marine biology. Right now, I'm a PhD student in behavioral neuroscience. This is my job for now. And my project is to study the complex brains and behavior of cephalopods using molecular tools. So I'm not a doctor yet, but hopefully I will become soon. Tree Salmon, I love your name by the way. Do you know there is this website, it's, it's a fake website, but it's super funny about the tree octopus. I will put a link in the description. I think it's hilarious. So Tree Salmon asks, uh, what got you into this whole thing? Biology, animation, etc. I am a biologist by formation and I always had a tendency for art and music I've been drawing all my life. And I'm super happy that I can now combine all those things I like, art, science, and music in one single thing that is my channel. So both Guillermina Marin and Joy Sullivan asked me, have you ever worked as a teacher or would you like to? I am not a science teacher. I had the opportunity to teach and follow some research interns in the past, but except for that, I never really science. Both Guillermina, Marin and Siamese101 asked me what's your favorite cephalopod? It's very hard to choose. I would say the flamboyant cuttlefish because it's it's beautiful. It, it really looks like a flower and I... Oh, nature is beautiful. Noel Shipment asked are you a tea drinker? If so, what tea do you dig? I am definitely more of a tea drinker than I am a coffee drinker. I don't know a whole variety of teas, but I really like the special tea called um, Reine de Saba or Queen of Sheba or something like that in, in English. It's actually a black tea with mango, apricot and peach and I love that. Shadid Urraman uh, asked, 
what's your real name? If by real name you mean the name that my parents gave me or my legal name, it is Mathieu, which is French. But I have used many names in my life and Nemo is one of them. When I'm talking to you right now, I'm not playing a fictional character. I'm just highlighting certain aspects or shades of my personality that just reflect the identity of the channel. So Nemo is also my real name. It's just not my legal name, right? Shadid also asks, where are you from? And the Cube Snowflake asks, what country are you from? So this is also very interesting for me to reply to this type of question because when you ask where are you from, are you asking me where I was born? Are you asking me where did I live most of my life? Or are you asking me where do I feel at home? Because for all those questions, I have different answers. I was born in Belgium. I lived in many different countries, Belgium, Italy, France, the US and now Germany and I feel at home anywhere I am. Shadid also asked, how did you learn so much? I am very curious by nature and this is why I think I became a scientist in the first place. Just ask questions. Whenever you don't know something or you don't understand something, don't be afraid to ask questions because there's always something to learn, always. Epping Awesome Gameplays asked, are you Italian? I think you are, but I'm not sure. My nationality is not Italian, um, but part of me is since I lived eight years in Italy. Ricciardi OS275 asked, how is Italy? It's a beautiful country and you should probably visit. Timotius76, Timotius, Timotius which countries do you want to visit? I would love to visit a lot of countries. Right now in my mind I have uh, Japan, Sri Lanka, Australia, or Chile, for example. TUS, have you ever visited Greece? Nope, actually a few years ago, there was this cephalopod conference in Heraklion, I think Heraklion, and I was a student, I didn't have money to go, and so I didn't go and I, I was pretty sad. Should I consider a visit Greece? Just, just let me know. Some dude asked, if you were stuck on a deserted island and could only pick one of the things talked about in your videos to bring with you in any amount you want, which would you choose? A giant squid to help you conquer the endless seas. An army of tardigrades to teach you the extreme of ways of survival. A bunch of sterling engines to uh, build a boat out of. Or an ecosystem in a jar to give you something to stare at as you slowly die. Realistically, a giant squid could give me some food for a couple of days and also provide some baits for fishing. I would not be able to talk to tardigrades and an ecosystem in a jar um, would be totally useless. But at least the shelling engine is made of metal and I could use that to make some tools, maybe a knife or something. I would say shelling engine. But if I had to choose one of those options in a more poetic way, I think I would go with the ecosystem in a jar. Choose a certain irony of taking care of something that will live way longer than yourself. Can you imagine the scene where to find my skeleton next to this beautiful ecosystem that will live forever? So that's it for this Q&A session. I hope you liked it. Let me know in a comment if you would like to see more of those chill and personal videos on the channel. Take care and I'll see you very soon.